50, first question I want to ask you as a producer of the show and, you know, the show being the surprise hit as it was, um, how personally responsible do you feel for a lot of, you know, competitors going with largely minority casts and being the successes that they are, like Empire and Blackish and Fresh Off the Boat and all those shows yeah, like those that? Those shows were in the pipeline. So they were coming, we just was first. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And that, I like that. You don't get a second chance at the first impression. <laughs> you know, so they got to come and say they were behind the success of power. <laughs> and at, at that, that point, to that point when I felt like that, that uh, Empire was copying it, they, it's just the marketing. Mm -hmm. Like the stuff, the, the photos that they took, mm -hmm. putting power in the tagline, Empires are built on power. Mm -hmm. You know, like those different things, and they were targeting the same demographic. So, and that's, that's a corporate decision, it's not the actual talent. Yeah, and you weren't you know, shy about that either. You no. was on Twitter talking about it. I got it. a different type of temperament. <laughs> you know, like I don't come from the actor side where I don't just say things because I feel like yeah. it may ruin a relationship. Yeah. I don't care if I'm on Fox. Fox <laughs> <laughs> could have me or not have me. Uh, Actually, I'm in the uh, Melissa McCarthy uh, uh, spot right now. It's, yeah. yeah, it's a Fox film. Nice, so. nice. All right, yeah. well, so they need me. I, 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 I could do, assume I so. I got to do publicity for that. Or I ain't going to do publicity. And I still also, it's the first pit people out. I think that it's the biggest risk because then you either succeed or you fail. So we succeeded. Then people say, oh, do you succeed? Well, how do they succeed? And then they have the benefit of kind of using or not using whatever parts of that model that they like. Mm -hmm. yeah, it creates an example of how you can win. Nice, can nice. See, you know. Well, now, talking, you know, going back to the show, you know, last season we left off, you know, everything went to hell. You're trying to kill everybody. Yeah. The club's falling apart. I mean, what can we expect now with, the, with season well, two coming? Well, up? I was running things before I went in. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's just, it's a typical drug dealer's temperament. I <laughs> want it back. I want what was mine. And... When I get out, I realized what they build is so sophisticated, it's, it's a different, they took a different approach, I don't see it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you, you usually would see the guy build himself up, accumulate people to be strong enough to take the next person's block if they have to, they just move down on that, on that corner. Mm -hmm. And instead of doing that, they've been able to create a model where they distribute everything through those crews in those different territories and let them farm it, mm -hmm. you know, and it works, so now I want that. Mm -hmm. You know, and the only way the person, the most honest person in the entire series is is Tommy's character. Yeah, the, you know, Joe plays a guy that's a straight shooter because he's grown up in the environment. Where are you from? Um, from Staten Island, New York. Okay, so like it's like the white kid in the middle of the projects mm -hmm. in Stapleton. Gotcha. And because he's grown up there the whole time, only thing that's different is his nickname. Mm. And and because people think he ain't. Who he is, because he grew up there. He had to he's it wearing it on his sleeve over. constantly. Mm. So he, he's like, when I get out of jail and, and Ghost isn't dead, mm. I don't want to continue to go after Ghost immediately because it would send me and him to war. It's like the it's like the old you know hood stereotype where it's like you know be careful the white guy is cool all the black dudes because there's no telling what he, he does knows to everything. get that respect. Gotcha. Right. So tell me, I mean you know obviously you you've taken bits and parts of your own you know life into you know influence in the show, mm -hmm. what can we take from that going to the next season? For, from going to the next season, it starts to get complex. It starts moving faster. Well, it's like you, things don't get wrapped up. Yeah. When you said, where does season two start? Season two starts exactly on the heels of season one. Within mm -hmm. seconds of season one ending, season two starts, and everything that could get wrapped up in the next episode, instead of that, you just get more mm -hmm. and bigger so, and more. But the, the, the stakes get so much higher during the second season. That's why I say it's five or ten times better than the first season because you can feel law enforcement coming. Mm -hmm. And you can feel like the things that are happening on the street level are just kind of spinning out of control at the same time. So it just feels crazy. And oh. because there's so much truth in this show, I think it's proven that, that it rings true in so many aspects. Yeah, and that's so, why it's been so successful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That there's a certain point with the law enforcement coming down where you're like, something's going to happen. So something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, well, a lot of times I'm going to have it. <laughs> 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 All right, also, appreciate yeah, talking man. to you guys. My pleasure. Thank you guys so much.